Hello and welcome back on my YouTube channel, Part Doshi, Learning by Doing. So this is another video going to be on UiPath apps. In this, I'm going to cover the basics of one of the very useful control, I will say, in UiPath apps, that is custom list. Now I have many times seen many queries with respect to custom list, how to build a custom list, where it can be used, what are the things that you can do using that. So I'm going to try and cover the basics of it for now in this video. And then we will have more videos on the advanced part of the custom list as well. So now, as you can see on my screen, there can be scenarios when you are developing an app and <laughs> please ignore the alignment of the text that is there. I, I did not work much on the beautification for this video of custom list, but yeah, we are going to understand the complete feature. All right. So as you can see on my screen right now, right, there can be requirements where I want to create this kind of list structure to display to the user. Here, there can be more two buttons, accept or reject or something like that, or send an email. It could be anything, right? So that also we'll see how we can configure or in our further videos, but for now, how you can create this kind of list. Now the data for this particular list is coming from a data service. So I will just show what my data is. It has four columns, full name, email, phone number, and profile photo. This profile photo field is of file type. If you see over here, it is of type file. All right, and here I've uploaded the images. This could come from anywhere. This could come from the app itself, or you might have uploaded an Excel file of the pre-filled data. It could be anything. So the input data uh, can have multiple sources. Now what I've done is I've created a app. It's a simple VB app. Okay, here I've used a header and then I've used a container to display my column names. If you see name, email and phone number, what I've done is I've distanced them to particular margins and they are separated using that. More ideal way is to put this headers into individual containers so they are already aligned and And they are already aligned. Then if you see, I have either one, two, and three. Again, it's a best practice that you rename this particular headers. For now, just I'm creating a demo, so I've avoided that. Then what you need to do is you need to go to add control display. In display, you will have a custom list. Okay. So you just drag and drop it. When you do, you will have this default structure. Now, what is a custom list? We all know what is a list. It, it is used to store a certain type of data. It could be string, it could be integer, and like that. We all know the default definition of list. Now, custom list is a control where you can display data in a dynamic way, in a custom manner, like how you can see over here. Normally in list, what happens? You can store all strings, you can store all integers or anything. Here, you can store things in a different way. So now when I talk about custom, if you see, this is a image control that I've used as I will scroll up here. I've used email control and this is my custom list. Now here I've used email control. I've used label one, two, three, and I can have more things as well. So in this way, it provides a custom way to display your list of data. That is the reason it is called as custom list and it can be used in that particular places. All right. So now if you see over here, this is another list that I that I just dragged and drop. I'm going to scroll down. Now, if I want, I can delete this. If you see everything is there over here, this is the template. I can delete this. And in this only, I can add whatever I want, whatever custom list I want to create, I can add that element. So for that, I'll just display over here. What I did is I used, uh, I used the first, block which is then you just have to add it in the first block only. before that what i did i added my entity so you click on this drop down button click on entity and then over here i have added my id card details and in general what i did i clicked on this query builder selected my entity and clicked on save so my source of data is data service you can use data table as well there is a little different way to do that but here for simplification purposes i'm using a data service entity okay so i've used a data service entity this is my image control and like i said these are my three labels 
Now, my data is going to be a loop of data. If you make any changes over here in this first row, which is there, everything will be reflected below. You don't have to do manually for the number of rows. Okay. Now, how do you specify the data that for each row, the data should be passed over here dynamically for all the multiple rows that we have? There is a very simple syntax to that. You click on this particular control that you have added, go to source, here you have to do open expression editor. Then you have to write this particular syntax, this row. This is a default, you can say variable or method created whenever you are using a data service entity within a custom list. This row dot, you will get your data service column names. Mine is profile folder. Just select that and click on save. That's it. There's no complex syntax or anything that you have to write or complex configurations that you have to do. It is pretty straightforward thing that you have to do. So that you have specified over here. For this one, I have specified, as you can see, this row dot full name. For this, this row dot email. And for this, this row dot phone number dot two string, since it is in decimal in my data service entity. If I go over here in my fields, it is a phone number and number. I'm converting it to a string. So in this way, what I'm doing is I'm displaying the you can say employee details in custom list in a very dynamic and custom manner. If you see, this looks very attractive. If I build a proper UI, make the alignment and everything, this is going to look just amazing, right? So this is how you configure your custom list. And this is how you use in UiPath apps. There are more advanced things that you can do. As what you can do is you can put here two button, approve and reject, right? On click up, up and you can have one more column status that will be updated dynamically upon clicking on approve and reject. So we'll try to build that kind of process and see what we can do, right? So that, that is something I'll cover in my further custom list tutorials. But yeah, this is the basic tutorial of custom list. If you have any questions or if you are trying to build something using custom list, feel free to put it in the comment section and I can help you with that. Thank you for watching the complete video and see you in the next video.